Brad House. I finally have another Evernote video for you. Woohoo! <laughs> I told you getting those projects more organized is gonna help me get back on top of things. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. Um, Liam is kind of running in and out from the back room of the house out onto the deck, so we're gonna try, okay? Um, what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is your Evernote email address. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I've tried to leave enough room in the frame here. Um, I think what I'll do is any steps that I kind of walk you guys through, I'm going to try to annotate the screen. So if you're watching this on a phone or a tablet, those annotations may not show up. No worries. Um, instead of putting everything in the description box, I'm just going to put a link to the corresponding blog post um, at carrieharling.com and I'll have everything typed out there. Um, Everything that I have found that I do with my Evernote email address is there's also a great article in Evernote's knowledge base about it. I will link to that in the description box below and I will also put that in the corresponding blog post, okay? But I will type up a blog post too. Um, I took notes so that I wouldn't miss anything. See, I'm trying to break those bad habits I've developed. I don't know where those bad habits come from. They're so frustrating. <laughs> okay, if you have an Evernote account, you have an Evernote email address. For those of you who know this, bear with me. Um, maybe there'll be some things that you didn't know you could do with that Evernote email address. Um, I have found that a lot of the things that I used to do with my Evernote email address, I don't have to do so much anymore. Um, I use an iPhone and um, iOS has now kind of integrated a great Evernote upload tool um, that's available. So some of the things I used to use the email address for I don't anymore. Sometimes I still do out of habit. Um, but basically your Evernote email address allows you to email things into your Evernote account. Okay, so the best example that I can always give people is if I, um, most of our bills I do online, right? So I'll get an email saying, hey, your new bill is ready. I immediately forward it to Evernote. Before I even, like the second I open that email, I forward it to Evernote. So that way if I accidentally delete it, I have a backup of it in Evernote. I don't have to go digging through Gmail and all that good stuff. It'll go straight to my default folder. Um, when I pay a bill online and you get the confirmation email, that I forward directly into Evernote. Um, there are several different uses for it, obviously. That's always been my biggest one. I used to also email web page links, like if I was online reading something or if I saw something I wanted to save to read for later, um, I would email it directly into my Evernote account. There's a great web clipper available for browsers um, that does basically the same thing, so I use that quite a bit. But emails that I want to hang on to, um, emails I need to hang on to for reference, um, you know, nice emails that I get that make me feel good. You know, those are the kinds of things I go ahead and forward them directly into Evernote. Um, so everything you email into Evernote, unless you put it in the subject line to go elsewhere, will go into your default notebook. Okay? One sec. Liam, can you close the door, please? Can you close the door? Thank you. <laughs> the air conditioning's on because it's very warm out, so I want the door closed. <laughs> um, so what I've done is I, I'll tell you where to find your Evernote email address. I... I saved my Evernote email address into my contacts and I just have it listed as Evernote upload. So when I go to forward an email, regardless of whether I'm on the laptop or I'm on the phone or whatever, it's real quick to just, it'll autofill. I start typing Evernote, Liam's running laps around the table so the camera might get a little shaky. Um, and then it autofills the rest of it because if you go look for your, your Evernote email address, I'm getting that, it's a tongue twister, um, for me at least. Daddy? Yes, baby. You know more. Um, it is... It's kind of a long, random slew of numbers and letters and whatnot. It's really kind of hard to remember, so I didn't even want to bother trying. I just put it into my contacts as Evernote upload. Um, if you are on, here's where the notes come in. If you're on a Windows computer, if you open up Evernote and then go to Tools and then Account Info, there will be a section that says email notes to, and then your Evernote email address will be there. So you can copy and paste it into your contacts. Um, if you're on a Mac, if you open up Evernote, click on your username and then account info, and your Evernote email address will be listed below email notes to, okay? If you're on an iDevice, um, so like an iPhone, if you open up Evernote, tap your username, tap settings, tap general, your Evernote email address is there. Okay, um, and if you're on an Android device, device, if you open up Evernote, tap the three dots in the upper right corner, tap settings, and then account info, and then scroll down to your Evernote email address. 
okay so that is where you can find your Evernote email address now when you email things into Evernote they go directly into your default notebook so whatever you have your default notebook set to that's where they can go so you know it's gonna get in there personally this is just the way I use Evernote my my default notebook is my kind of my inbox it's where stuff that I need to process um, <clears throat> pardon me so a lot of times if I'm hurrying I don't worry about doing any of the stuff I'm about to tell you because I know at least it's in there and when I go through and process that inbox I can move that note or add tags to it if I need to or add a reminder um, but if I'm not in a hurry I do like to do that kind of all in one step and Evernote allows you to do that um, so when you let's say you're going to forward an email can you close the door please baby close the door you have a green water balloon we'll fill it up in just a minute can you close the door um, sorry guys when you um, so if you just forward an email with your Evernote email address it'll go into your default notebook okay if you would rather send it to a certain notebook or tag it with certain tags or set a reminder on that email you can do it all in one step if you'd like Evernote utilizes the subject line of that forwarded email um, to allow you to add those things okay so if you're forwarding an email and you go down to the subject line of the email that you're sending to your Evernote email address if you use the at symbol directly followed by the name of an existing notebook that you already have in your account Evernote will send that email as its own separate note directly into that notebook rather than into your default notebook okay so at symbol immediately followed by the name of the notebook and it has to be an existing notebook <clears throat> if you want to add tags to that note again in the subject line use the hashtag or the pound sign and then the name of the huh, helicopter. <laughs> it's getting loud. Um, use the hashtag, um, like I said, for those of us older people, pound sign. And then the tag that you want added to that note it has to be an existing tag. Okay, same rule for notebooks applies for tags. Um, if you want a reminder added to that note, if you put an exclamation point in the subject line, Evernote will automatically set a reminder. Okay? If you want a reminder with an alarm, so say I want to be reminded about this email tomorrow, if you put an exclamation point and then type the word tomorrow, it will remind you the next day. If you want to be reminded on a specific day, you use an explanation point, <clears throat> exclamation point, and then the year, a slash, the month, a slash, and the date that you would like that alarm to go off to remind you. Okay, again, these are all things you can do within Evernote, but sometimes it is nice to be able to do it all right when you're forwarding that email and you know it's done. Okay, so those things all occur in the subject line of your email that you are forwarding to your Evernote email address. Okay, and again, like I said, I'll type all this up in the blog post. There's also a knowledge base article I'll link to. Okay. Um, let's see, we talked about saving it to your contacts to make it easier to use. Um, who can use your Evernote email address? If you have a basic Evernote account, it, you can send a total of five emails. So you can kind of try it out and see if it's something you're really going to utilize or not. If you have a plus or a premium account with Evernote, you can send up to 200 emails a day using your Evernote email address. Okay, so there are your usage options. Um, this one I did not know about until I started kind of looking this stuff up for the video. If you want to append an email to an existing note, so if you have a big long note running for whatever reason and you get an email and you just want to tack that email, instead of being a separate note, you want that email to go to the end of an existing note. If you go back to your subject line again and put a plus sign at the end of the subject line, the body of the email will be added into the most recent note with that title. Okay, so if you get to your subject line, put a plus at the end of the subject line, and then whatever the title of that most recent note was that had that title, it will automatically get added to the end of that note. Okay, um, emails go into your default notebook, we know that already. Um, if you turn on auto filling, this was another one I didn't know about until I started researching this. Um, Evernote has an auto filling option. If you go into your account preferences, it's under personal settings. Okay, autofilling will look for similar notes that are already in your Evernote account and apply the same notebook and tag settings to the current email that you're emailing into your Evernote account um, as the other ones. Does that make sense? So account preferences, your personal settings, anything that is similar that is already in your Evernote account, Evernote will automatically apply the same notebook and tag settings to this new email that you're sending into your account, okay? Um, here's another one that I do a lot and I honestly kind of forget about it 
because I set it up a while ago and and then I haven't had to fiddle with it since because it works so well so I honestly sometimes I forget um, until I go in and weekly I try to do it weekly kind of process through that inbox if I get behind um, usually I'm looking at it every day every other day um, but sometimes if I get behind I'm making a point to do it at least like on Sundays um, anything that I get as a newsletter um, I usually instead of leaving those sit in my inbox until I have time to read them I have my Gmail account filters set to those just go directly to my Evernote account they land right directly in my default box um, another one you could do is create a folder in your Evernote account called to read if you want or want to read or need to read or whatever and um, you can email if you get newsletters and whatnot and you don't want them sitting in your inbox until you have time to read them but you know darn well you need to look at them um, you can forward them directly to your to read notebook inside your Evernote account if that's what you know catches your attention um, you can forward every email from a certain sender or with a particular subject using your email clients filters um, directly into Evernote the way that you want it without you having to do it yourself does that make sense so um, all of my, um, like I get the newsletter from Unstuck, um, from Brain Pickings, those are the, I, I keep up with those, I, I really enjoy reading them. Those, I have my clients, my, my Google um, Gmail settings set automatically if they see an email from Unstuck or from Brain Pickings, um, there are a couple others that aren't coming to mind right off the top of my head, Gmail knows to automatically forward those um, into my Evernote account so that they're already there. I don't have to worry about them sitting in my inbox and me accidentally deleting them. Um, if I use my inbox to keep track of things, first of all, it becomes very full very quickly. So I don't like to use my inbox kind of as a holding pen for things until I get to them. I'm far better off using my Evernote default notebook for that because that I mindfully process. Um, like I said, it's not usually a couple of days go by that I don't look at that, but and that's at most usually. Um, but if I, I get into the, this habit, and I did it a while ago, and I haven't fallen into this trap in a while, thank goodness, um, I'll, you know, leave things sit in my inbox until I get to them, and then pretty soon you've got 200 emails sitting in your inbox, and it's just, it, it just feels impossible to get through them. So when I have them go straight to my Evernote account, much easier. Um, then they're in my inbox, I know what I need to process, and they're there. I don't have to worry about accidentally deleting them or anything. Um, the other thing you can do is when you're signing up for those newsletters, um, those I had set up to go using the filters because I was already subscribed to them using my Gmail account, okay? Now, if I find a newsletter that I really like, I use my Evernote email address as the, the sign-up email. So those get emailed directly into my Evernote account and they don't go through my Gmail account at all. Um, sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. It depends. Um, you know, I don't mind doing it if it's somebody I know, you know, and if it's like the newsletter for their business or whatever, I don't worry about it. Um, otherwise, I just use my Gmail filters and they just go straight into my Evernote account. Um, so that is it. That is using your Evernote email address. Um, if you guys have different ways that you use your Evernote email address, leave a comment below, leave a comment at the blog, um, make a video or write a blog post about it and send me the link and I will share it with everybody. Um, again, I'm going to annotate what I can. It's going to take a little while, but I'm going to get it all annotated probably up in this space somewhere. Um, so if you're watching on a mobile device and you can't see those annotations, don't worry. Um, the corresponding blog post will be down below and the link to the knowledge base article from Evernote will be down below as well. Okay, thank you guys so much. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.